and as we move into the next episode. Yeah. And I do like how the episodes are sort of following off from uh, each other. So, like, we had episode one, which ended at them uh, seeing uh, the Ever After, basically, and all the different acres and the tree. And so F2 sort of stepped up from that, started exactly where we left off there. Yeah, and very then, similar to Volume 8. And then episode kind of three very close. started with them, of course, uh, being escorted to the castle. So, yeah, I, I do like how these episodes are sort of like, it's just a continuation of the story. You're not cutting to someone else or doing something else, except for the end of Ep 3. But um, I find that they're just all flowing really nice. Like, you, you could watch mm. these three episodes in, like, one chunk as one continuous mm. story. Yeah, which was really good, which I like. Yeah, so, and I, mm. I think Ruby has always kind of been written in that way, mm. in like a binge sort of way, even though it's a week-to-week -week release episode. I think a lot of people yep. would say, like, your Volume 5s and your Volume 8s are better to watch... One, one sitting go. through mm. rather than week, week to week to week just because of the payoffs and the anticipation that those episodes created didn't work as much to some people for a um episode to episode uh uh way and i like as soon as we start off with uh episode three we immediately again have just wife being like again like you know <laughs> like we're not in like you know you know we're not alex you know yeah. like again like why should we you know follow this story and again always tying back to how Weiss is always kind of the trepidatious one. She's always one like, you know, why are we going back to Atlas? Yeah. Why are we... Why do, why do we... It's funny how Weiss... Actually, it's not funny at all. It makes a lot of sense. Weiss mm -hmm. doesn't want to follow the life that is... The path that has been set for her. Because yeah. Because she's done that already for her whole life. She wants she to do her, her own... Her, do yeah, her she own wants path. to do her yeah. own thing. She wants to be rebellious. She wants to forge her own path. Because she spent her whole life doing what she's been told. So even in this sense, there's a mirror of... She doesn't want to just follow Alex's story because that's mm. what she's meant to do, but she doesn't want to do what she's meant to do. She wants yeah. to do what she thinks is right. Yes. Which again, just go to the tree, but she does realise that she can't just do that. She can't so. just walk to the tree, no. So unfortunately, they have to follow this path. Yep, at least for the time yeah. being. And then yeah. we get our first look at the butterfly as well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which I did see a parallel, obviously, to the butterfly we saw in volume uh, six. Not the same design, but it's pretty similar. Yeah. Um, curious again what significance that will be because I always thought that the butterflies in that in volume six were like, huh, why is this symbolic? Why mm. butterflies? We haven't had like butterfly motifs have not been a, like of all the motifs we've had in Ruby, butterflies weren't really a thing until no. volume six, and we get butterflies again here. I'm just I, curious. If I'm end. thinking. I don't know what it would be, but yeah, I think it's to do with curious cat. I sort of get the feeling because the yeah. it can take different forms. So I think it took yeah, the form of a butterfly. butterfly so it could, is just, yeah. Yes. Follow them as such. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious if like there's any significance to them going forward. The only connection I can think of is the relics, because they're mm -hmm. talking about the relic of creation and how they found the silver eyes with the butterflies in volume six. We got here the possible relic, oh, sorry, relic of knowledge. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Then we got here the relic of creation, possibly. But again, just you know, drawing straws at this point, just seeing if I can make any connections. Um. Yeah. Or not. And, and then we had um. The, the prince. <laughs> yes. I do love, um, I don't know what the intentional significance is, but I love the, the axe horns because it reminds me of Peter Port's uh, oh, axe yes. shotgun. Yes, yes. So I'm curious if there's any, and again, the colour scheme, so I'm curious if that's meant to be a, yeah. a, just a funny Easter egg towards that. Maybe. I didn't even think um, of that. That's a good point. I don't yeah. think that's the significance, but I like the Easter eggness yes. of it. Um, and, and then we get mm. our, and then we get, then we get uh, the other after is King Joffrey. Yes. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, and I like how the the girls uh, also were saying, "Well, there's meant to be a red king, but we've got a red prince." And then the guard was like, "If it was not for your kind, the king would still be here." So yes, very interesting because so... we know Alex yeah. caused a war, but obviously in the books it wasn't written that the king died or something happened to the king. So no. Mm. And again, it mentions war, but we, obviously we haven't actually seen. We actually don't believe there's any actual proper copy of the the book. <laughs> like we got the fairy tale book, but it's not in that. Obviously. It's not in that. Um, no, no, it isn't. But I don't like they've mentioned war. I, I think it's like it's it's more like like the word war is mentioned. Yes. But it's not like get a detailed. It's a fairy tale. We're not gonna get like a detailed description of a war that happened. We're probably just gonna get yeah. and war broke out and then next. Bit you know like yep. it, I don't I'm curious what the significance is to that but yeah. we also have the rusted knight which seems yes. to be the only other human in this world that we Possibly. know will come across that like is in this world because we think again Alex is probably just a shadow and so the only other human 
but again, we think it's human, might not be, um, mm. is the rusted knight. So, yep. what's it, that, that would make sense, like a knight killing the king, or maybe a knight maybe. betraying the king. Mm. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. So, so I, I do like how they did state that in there. So, we know some time has definitely passed Angles. The prince is here, uh, he's running the castle, and the king's not there, so... Yeah, I love the crown too is also too big. Yes, the crown's too big for his head. his head. Because again, he's yeah, recently, you know, he hasn't grown yes. into it yet. And he's uh, obsessed with the colour red, so of course he didn't like the penny's blade because it was green. <laughs> Just yeah, to the side. Was... <laughs> yeah, like, How I, could I, you? I, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. a, a part of me is also like I'm like um I remember seeing that and was like I don't wonder if that's it for the sword, like I'm surprised Ruby didn't just go get it. Well, they, she did try um, to, but the guard stopped her. But she could have yeah, used her semblance to get it, I maybe. But, mm. yeah. Again, it's just one of those things, again, where I feel like that could have been executed maybe a little bit better. Yeah. Um, just because it was, like, such an important item, and then all of a sudden thrown it's away, and then moved on. just aside. Yeah. Yeah, and you moved on. Again, I think, we also, we know we'll see, see it or another sword again. So yeah. until that happens, I feel like once that happens, it'll be fine. But for now, it's kind of like, well, we're just throwing that aside. But I think that it will come up again, obviously. Um, later. I love that. And again, going back, I guess saying how Ruby, yeah, is trying to put on a straight face here. Like, again, now she's gone through the monologue and stuff. She's gone through that moment. She's like, okay, let's just get through this now. Let's, let's get through this. Let's get out of here. Yeah. So even, like, even right, in this, this moment where she's like, it's like, and I loved, I loved the, to have the fact that she's finally learned curtsy. She's finally learned yes. how to like, you know, I love that detail. <laughs> Time back to volume three. Yeah. Um, and I like how Weiss is the one who's the least courte courteous. Yes. This is what, when back in Volume 3 of Winter, she was the most courteous. Yep, yep. So I like that. I like the the little video, too, of, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a video of, uh, probably not because you've only just, you only just did your reaction yesterday. I did, um, yeah. I only did it there's, yesterday. Um, <laughs> just a, a video zooming in of all them and all their reactions, like Ruby's the most courteous. Yang's like, yeah, okay, hi. Blake's trying to be curtsy. And then Weiss is like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Happy birthday. They all have very distinct, yeah, they all have very distinct uh, reactions and stuff. Yes. Um, as well, which I really liked. Yeah. And stuff. And I love just how much um, how much Weiss is the most kind of distraught by the situation. And it ends up being like, wow, was I this bad? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's such, a, it's such a moment of self reflection for Weiss. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, also, and also, I love how, like, it's like, how did you know it was my birthday today? It's like, there are signs just, everywhere. You, so. And you just told us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you just told us. And I like how, like, because he's love... sort of alluding to the, the Queen of Hearts in, um, in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. So, of course, he's like, off with their heads, basically. Well, he doesn't say off with heads. He says, cut their heads off, I think he says. Yeah, um, he def at least in the, in the later, later part of the episode, he definitely does. Yes. And I like when when the king is the prince. Sorry, the, my sorry, sir. The prince. Yes. The prince is talking to Weiss. And like yelling at her and stuff, like, I'm the prince. And Weiss just has this reaction, and it's very easy to miss. You see her eye twitching at one point. It's yes. very easy to miss, which is just like. Uh. Oh. Yeah, and she's like, it's like, was I, it's like, was I, was I this pompous? Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, or brothers, whatever the right yep. way to say that would be. Um, and the soldiers come in, like, here's the sword. It's like, we gave you the sword. Here's the sword, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, red sword and yep. green sword, red sword, and it's just yeah, obviously doesn't like Ugh. any color but red. <laughs> uh, I thought that was so good. And then yeah, of course, Ruby well says about um, playing games. Yeah, she's like, like she's mm. like, you know, in this moment, she's trying to, you know, as much as the sword being found away is like, it's like we need to move on. We, we need, need to, we yeah. need, we need to get out of here. We need to, do the, we need to do the right thing. That's more important right now. So she's trying very difficult. To kind of keep her composure and do yes. the right thing and stuff. So yeah, and then we get just that scene of going through the tower and stuff and the animation and stuff, and it's just yeah. like great work from the animators and stuff and all the effort they're putting into stuff that maybe isn't the most significant or necessary, but it just is very. Um, and very we had a glimpse of the butterfly again in that shot too. Yes. Mm. Yes. And then, and then like, uh, he's like, "You are as wise as you are." Short. <laughs> and then she's, she's like. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like ever sure. since that comment, everyone's like, "Oh, thank goodness." Yeah, everyone's like, "Oh my god!" But the kid, yeah, the prince is like, and <clears throat> little's like, "Yes, it worked." <laughs> uh, then we got oh. the game, the 
the oh, not quite chess, but very similar to chess sort of game. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I forget like, the name of it, but it reminds me of the game with the with the little marbles and such, where you had to hop over um, a, a spot to then claim that marble, and the one with the the most um, of them wins. It reminds me a bit of that game. I forgot mm. what it's called, but yeah, it reminded yeah. me a bit of that sort of merge with chess. And uh, like yeah. when I first saw it, and, and that the uh, yeah, I think it is draughts, Chosa. Yeah, check or oh, checkers. Draughts. Yeah, checkers does work in a similar way. Actually, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, Chinese checkers. <laughs> yeah, so, so sort of similar to that. And, and also like because uh, with the whole uh, they have to uh, like defeat the the piece uh, to claim that spot. Um, and of course, it, it, um, the um, Weiss, Blake, and Yam becoming some of the pieces. It reminded me a lot of uh, Wizard Chess from Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, reminded me a lot, true. a lot of that. Um, the, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. So they're discussing, and I like the little discussion of them, like again, like um, the tree's so far away. It's like, well, yeah, that's why we're asking for help. Uh, yeah. So if we win, if you win, you'll help take us to the tree. And it's like, I was like, okay, and then. And don't say what happens if he wins, which. I guess believe will be off with their heads. I suppose I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I I loved how it was very ominous, and I liked how um how it was all done with that sort of first phase of of the game. I thought it was really good. Mm. Mm. Yes. And a fact, of course, with that's how uh, Weiss, Blake, and Yang get sm- turned to small people. <laughs> It's right. Yes. Uh, yes. That we saw in the trailer, yes, of very, course. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Very checkmate moments, in a sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> but apologies if I'm distracted. I'm just kind of looking through the episode, just trying to find. Yeah, some, I've got some uh, notes, sort of roughly um, not mentioned. Uh, well, the song that um, was played during the actual proper combat bit, where um, all the pieces have turned on, uh, wife Blake and Yang. Uh, that song, I believe, is called Checkmate. And I was watching a lyric video for it just before the podcast, and I, I love I love that song. It's talking about you know swords up, gun, guns drawn. It talks about um, uh, where was it? The seconds and a part of the yeah. Who is your king of the castle now? I am taking control of the board game. Yeah. Oops. Oh oh oh! Don't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally, <laughs> accidentally clicked it. So it'll play. Uh, yeah, yeah um, checkmate, it, it, move along. It, it, it is yes. um, yeah, really interesting cool. to, I think, a really interesting detail is the fact that the, the prince has this kind of power. Um, yeah, yeah. In this world. I think that's really, I think that's really interesting. And, and obviously, just again, like his this... fingers, so there seems to be definitely magic here in some sort of design. Ruby, checkmate, Yang, like, we're really going to have to rename <laughs> that move. <laughs> yeah, so yes. I'm really curious the significance of the power and stuff. And obviously, again, at the end of the episode, they're still small, so I'm curious if that's going to be if the magic wears or off not. or something else has yeah, to happen. Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. The Maybe they need to eat that, a mushroom in the mushroom acre. Eat a mushroom to go big Maybe. again. Maybe that's why. That, <laughs> like Mario. That might make sense. <laughs> taken. I'm trying to think in the. I'm trying to think in the. And it's Mario the Day today. See, in the um, mm. the book you see in the intro. Mm. Uh, so I'm trying to think, I think it's the town. Then I think it's the. Then I think it is the, the castle. And then I think it might be yeah. the forest after that. So that makes sense of the next bit we're going to is the forest. So we might get. So actually, we might get forest and the mushrooms with the curious yes. hat in the next episode. Then we get the rusted knight in episode five. Yeah. Then we get the small tree in episode six. And then we get rest of the stuff after that. Maybe. How many episodes um, did they ten. say? Was it going to be nine? Ten. Ten. I believe. Right. Yeah. I do believe it's ten. Yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah. Um. And, and, yeah, so we... Ten, yeah. I, I, I like how we, um... Oh, sorry, for, sorry, apologies if I'm rambling, everyone. I apologise. No, I'm rambling a little bit as well, but that's what we do here. We ramble. Um, <laughs> you're completely right. Um, <laughs> I like the fact that the whole sequence, this idea that, like, you know, sure, Ruby is in this moment could just interfere, but I feel like in her mind that's against, like, against the rules and she can't necessarily interfere and stuff and she can't help. And there was... I, I think it's really interesting... I'm really curious how you felt. Obviously, mm. I'll get to see to, see tomorrow and watch the reaction. Mm. Um, I watched. I when I'm watching this scene, especially the fight, there was this weird sense of like I personally was feeling really tense and kind of concerned. I don't know why. Obviously, we know none of the characters die died in this scene. 
Mm. But I was really nervous for them in this scene. I don't I know why. I was stressed at I... the start. At the start of the game yeah. and everything, I was really stressed, like, oh, God, how's this going to go? Because yeah. it was very sort of drawn out and ominous. Yeah. But I do like I how, had... it. The, yeah, the prince didn't get his way. Like, he thought, oh, I'll put their friends in there so my pieces can chop them to pieces. Um, but didn't count on the fact that they could fight back and, and of course, that ruins his plan. And, yeah, and then... I finds out that the human. I like how Ruby's like, well, Blake's a fauness and Litter's a mouse, I think. And they're like, the rest of us are humans. And of course, that causes him to crack his face. Remind me of Humpty Dumpty with the crack. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and really like the porcelain doll kind of cracking across the face and stuff. Yeah. Very much too. Um, look, I, I really like how they managed to incorporate. Because I think we're really curious going into this volume, what kind of fights are we going to get? How are we going to get fights and stuff? So this was a really interesting way to do that and stuff. Yeah. And I really appreciate the choreography that went into this. Like, it really felt... It was like, so it felt, smooth. And it just yeah, and it flowed. Just, and it was so fun. It just, like It was just fun. It was, and it was great. Just like, <laughs> and it was like, again, like, you know, like, just everything the characters were doing, you know, just felt... You know, like, it felt like they were... It, it, I feel like sometimes Ruby fights can feel like limited in the sense of like, oh, we want our characters to do this, that, this, that, this, that. Like this just felt like like Weiss was just, you know, mm. I, it's weird to explain because I like I like almost all Ruby fights. I think this one has just felt like the most versatile. Every yes. character was doing a lot of really cool different things and stuff. And they're like, working you know, together as well, which was really cool. Yeah, especially and like, at you know, just like yeah, why you know Weiss Weiss especially just felt like. Like, you, you look back at the thing she was doing in the white trailer, mm. and then you look at other fights like the, the volumes, and you're like, man, she used to be able to do this, and now it feels like she can't even do this. Yep. And this fight felt really good and just felt like old school in terms of, like, the characters would just let, like, here's a fight where the characters are going to be badasses and win, and we don't need to make them... Because Ruby tends to make their characters look weak to make other characters look strong. Yeah. So yep. this was a good fight to where they didn't need to make the characters look weak. You know, sure... Blake got hit because Blake sucks and Blake always gets hit every single fight. That's just a trope at this point. And I just, I love that every fight Blake's in, she gets yes. her butt kicked. Yeah. Um, because she's more of a stealth also, fighter than, you know, all yes, out ruler yes, like exactly. Yang. And I also yeah. like, and I also like mm. the idea that she doesn't fight the way she used to because she used to fight like a violent terrorists. Yeah. You now, or however you want to, yeah, but now she kind of fights. She's more, more calculated. And it. she's more calculated yeah. and stuff. And that doesn't necessarily work to her advantage. Whereas, yes. like, Weiss had, like, you know, the. Yeah. I'm Yang, let's fight. <laughs> you know, it was just cool to see, like, Weiss fight and be proud and be good at fighting again. Yeah. It, you, know, you know, obviously she had the great fight with Mara in episode, in volume seven. Like, I don't want to, mm. I want to say she hasn't had great fights in ages. She has, but it's just, she has. the way Ruby's been made over the years, whenever we do get a good fight, it just feels significantly, like, yeah. refreshing. And I feel like Weiss was very... It shouldn't, but it does. Yeah, it was very much support. Like, she was using the glyphs to help with Blake, and then at the end as yeah, well. Yeah, a lot of the time yeah. she was the support character, mm -hmm. or she was just, like... Or she was just the magic caster, but here she was actually using she was, a sword yeah. and fuss. And I like the idea, too, again, we discussed again, like, do these characters have unlimited... Yeah, obviously, they don't have unlimited, you know, resources, necessarily. So, the idea, again, we saw Blake run out of ammo in this fight. Yeah. Um, again, we saw Weiss relying more on her rapier and her sword fighting in this fight, rather yes. than... Yes. Yeah, she used her glyphs and dust, but I imagine her semblance doesn't rely... While is enhanced by dust, probably doesn't use as much dust as, say, just cast, you know, spell yeah. casting or whatever. Well, she's able it. to she use does. it without dust, because she didn't really use many elements there. She had the gravity... Gravity um, would be the only one. Yeah, she really that'd probably used. be the only one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because she do... wouldn't really use mm -hmm. in an offensive sense anyway. So it's not like it's an offensive dust, particularly. Yeah. Anyway, it's a movement slash just for a semblance dust that she has. Yeah, because she did mention oh, like um, earlier in the episode um, with her and Blake that they talked about not having much dust yet, and I think why said that. Yeah, she, she was mentioned about, about in episode out. in episode yeah episode one that um she you know she's almost out of dust and stuff. I think like I said, we saw Blake. Um actively run out of ammo, whether that's just the cartridge or whether it's all of the stuff as well. And, yeah. I, and I really like the significance to the fact that Ruby doesn't have her weapon, yes. and yet Ruby's always the one that has the most ammo. I know she's always got like, she's <laughs> always got like, ammo is always a visible thing. So yeah. the idea that Ruby probably is the most prepared in terms of like, she has the most supplies of all the yeah. characters, but she doesn't yeah. have a weapon. That's I like that. Weapon, I don't know yeah. if that's intentional, mm. but I like that, that play on it all. Whereas like, you know, Yang, you know, I do wish they didn't necessarily in this Fight. They probably they could have had Yang just fight without using an Embassy car as yep. much. 
to improve, but I think most of her fists were with dust. Yeah. I feel like you could have taken that back a bit to emphasize that detail. But I also understand that as far as her arm might be more of an unlimited source of dust or propulsion or energy. Know. I don't know how she necessarily recharge. Like that probably recharges. Yeah. That's more than the cartridges on her other Ember Celica. So mm. not too sure how that works, but no. I, 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 that's something I would have liked her just to be fist fighting rather than also using dust. Yeah. Um, and I think too, and I saw some people um, talk about on Twitter too, is that it could be that in the Ever After, their uh, semblances are a bit more enhanced. Because, like, this yeah, is the that's... first time, like, why she she make, gave herself wings, which was amazing. It was really cool. Yes. But the fact that she summoned the sword which Yang used, which is something she hasn't mm. done before. So, yeah. So, I, I personally mm. don't think that's a sign of, like, the idea, like, like, she summoned the she summoned the obviously the she did the wings last time but didn't get to use it. Yeah. Then obviously this time she actually did get to use the wings properly this time. And she only summoned the sword. It does that 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 mm. doesn't to me feel like a semblance improvement. We didn't see Blake use a semblance at all in this one. No, fight, she didn't. Think. No. Um Which is yeah, fine. I'm not yeah, that's fine. Um Ruby we saw use a semblance once to save them at the end of the yep. game. Um, now, the reason why everyone says this is obviously because of the Neo scene. At yes, the end. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing, though. If you've read Roman Holiday, her projecting a second version of herself is actually what her semblance yeah. initially was. Yeah, it was. Her yeah, original I'm, semblance. I've been reading was, through the book, I just haven't quite finished yeah, it. Yeah, her about three quarters original three. semblance yeah. was project. Like she had an imaginary friend. That was her semblance. She, Neo was a separate person. She was yeah. trivia, and she could cast and create this realistic. Neo, that, you know, yes, would break like glass, but again, she wasn't a fighting, so that was never a problem until, um... Until it did, did happen. Until yeah. her... Again, I'm, again I'm, I'm trying to avoid... I don't <laughs> want to go past where you've been. Uh, so, until the moment where that, her... Yeah. Where, and again, I love the fact, since we're talking about it, I'm going to mention this here, because I don't know if I've <laughs> mentioned it before. My favourite part of the book is the fact that Neo and Trivia became one person because yep. of an incident with a candle, which yes. <laughs> ties into the song, which originally was meant for Roman, but the book repurposed that into the candle flame that burnt down her house yep. that turned that caused her mother to slap Neo for the first time, destroying the symbol, destroying the illusion, yep. cracking elements in Trivia's mind, which then caused her to rebuild herself as Neo, a yep. Trivia, like a mix, and she became Neapolitan, the mix yep. of both her imaginary friend and herself, because yep. of the candle flame, because she was trying to melt her way through the lock to get out of her house. Yes. I love that detail so much, and I've wanted to say that for so long. I love that detail <laughs> so much. Yes. Um, so is, Neo, yeah. casting, casting other Neos, is it, I don't think necessarily, an evolution of a semblance, at mm. least to the degree that this world is causing it. Yeah. I think, the, I think the grief and idea that she lost, she was betrayed by Cinder, she failed to kill Ruby, she's now in this world, so that panic, that grief, that state she's in, caused this to happen yep. more so than the world itself yep. until we see more evidence of it i think yeah and again it's not necessarily an evolution because we have seen we, have, we do have granted we've won granted but again we didn't really see how durable these neos were we didn't really see them do anything but the implication of what happened with them yeah yeah we, we definitely haven't seen that summon as many of them so yeah it's definitely no. um mm, it's interesting yeah, so I'm curious about necessarily the implications of that. Um, we also got a back to the fight. We got yes. a, another Bumblebee uh, moment with um, yep. Blake yep. and Yang. Yes, each other Blake and Yang. Really nice. Yes, I love I'm that. I'm just watching this fight and just seeing why she's using glyphs to jump around and attack everyone like she did in Volume Five in the yep. in the in the white uh, character short. Yeah. Um, and I just got a shout out to um uh, Adele. Uh, who wanted one of the animators previously on Ruby, a follower on Twitter, and she always she always posts really cool little sketches and stuff. Yes. Um, but she did the whole sequence, the like the one shot sequence of um, um, them kind of going around each other and then Weiss into the the winged feather stuff. That was her shot yes. and stuff. So I just got a <sighs> shout out to that because it was it was so, so cool. Many good the, sequences uh, here. Just with the wings, it was so cool. It was awesome. Yeah, I love the also the, the the gravity glyph tunnel that Blake ran through with the glyphs and stuff was a really nice detail and um yes. Then yeah, them redoing the um the attack from volume eight basically, where but they did it with um. Weiss and Blake had the gamble shroud. Yep. And Yang, had, was um being pulled back and she grabbed the sword. Yep. And then um 
was also that was also a reference to oh they've done that move before in ruby where they've had a sword and they've spun into the ground oh um, was that was crow maybe maybe oh who've done that or, or ruby i know ruby's done that with a scythe before yeah ruby's well, done the similar thing with the at the start of volume seven yeah. i think in that in the street fight she with the the yes. uh, sabers yeah i think she did that too um so i love seeing that um and also too it's also i just i don't know i've even seen anyone reference this before mm-hmm. um but it reminds me of raven with the sword i yep. think her sword was an ice sword as well yeah an ice and electric sword so yes. that was a cool parallel yeah um, between those two characters as yeah. well um it was very yeah, cool. overall the yeah the whole fight was just so cool and the music and stuff um and then the king the, <laughs> the prince the prince pushed the table flips over the table <laughs> <laughs> rush over to save them and stuff yeah and then that's when ruby's kind of yeah holding it ground until we get the eyes and all of a sudden cat appears yes i love the cat i just love the humor with the cat it's really cool mm-hmm. and yeah um it's very whimsical and reminds me of the cashier cat as well yeah yeah it's really cool. seems very mani- mani- manipulating as well yes he's, he's manipulating the whole situation again he, he could almost control the and king i mean he did he obviously we see him like release some sort of magic yeah which, in terms of calm down the king yes and so i love how the, when the the, uh, the prince is crying and the like little beads that are coming out of his eyes it's so yeah. cute <laughs> it's rather very, than yeah, actual the, the little water. details are done like that yeah the little tears yeah because he's a he's a doll uh, some form of doll so yeah, yeah. But I, I really like that little detail rather than just adding actual tears or the little beads that came out and he's having a full-on temper tantrum <laughs> Yeah. So then we have all the all the uh, Tim Ruby in the cloak and stuff, and they're yes. going through like the MC Escher stairs and around the house and stuff, trying to escape. Yeah, we saw a bit of that in the trailer, like, running through the the stair. It's a lot of bit like a, a staircase sort of thing. I, I loved all. I loved that scene. It was so cool. It was really well done. And... I love too. Um, I think they mentioned. Um, I want to say they mentioned it in um, the little um YouTube episode recap thing they did. Mm-hmm. Um, had they mentioned how. The um the cat, like the patterns of the cat, like mimic the the castle. Like there's uh, a lot of that kind yeah. of geometric square patterns all in the castle and stuff. Yeah. And like there's a scene where they're crawling through the vent, and the background is just this checkered pattern, which just yeah. perfectly matches up with the um the cat and stuff. Yes. Yeah, and, and they're like, yeah. and I like Blake finally getting this moment where she's kind of like realizing that. We came to see the king, but the king wasn't here. So this world is different. This isn't the exact yeah. same as the book. There's something different. <laughs> Why well, is like we're in its crappy sequel? <laughs> or, or, or even the um, the cat being like, the king. How do you know the king? Yeah. You know, like again, like this idea, like in, like you know, these people just arrived here. How would they know about the king? And it's like, well, because we've heard of this story of this world before. It's like, what do you mean you've heard of this story of this world before? Like it's it's the idea of going into a world and knowing every their history yeah. about. Like you going back to the Middle to Ages stuff. and knowing things that are going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I really liked with the cat as well. I was asking these questions and I had the, uh, the three questions, you know, who are you, why are you here, and what's your favourite dessert? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love the line too of Weiss being like, great, we're on the book. We're in, a, we're in its damn sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that too. Oh. And yeah, how they're not too surprised about, you know, still being small and they've got little there. <laughs> the same size yeah, as little, little, basically. Yeah. Yeah. There's even a scene where, like, um, Weiss is frustrated, but she's still, like, there petting little. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, where are you, where are you going? Kitty. Where are you going? I've had enough, have you? Kitty. Hi, kitty. What? No? Okay, Those fine. eyes. <laughs> there we go, human. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, how it's chasing butterflies. I think that's really cute. Um, and then yeah, of course the guys say we need to follow the cat because that's what Alex did. But the cat helped Alex get to the tree. So. Mm. Yeah. Yes, so next episode, yes, I assume we'll be following the cat. And I like your idea of the idea of going, we're going to the forest in order to undo the curse of the um, the girls being shrunk. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I, think that, I, I, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a pretty good shout. Um, yeah. And then we get a theory I don't know if we've really talked much about, but it's a very popular one, is the significance of the gods to this world. Okay, yes. Because then we get a pretty 
pretty... I'm still on the fence again. Like, I'm, I am a religious person, but I, I don't necessarily... It looks like, like the God of Darkness is realm. Is that sort of what you're leading to? Yeah? Well, well, we get, we get the first shot of the bridge, and we yes. have gold on one side, and we have the purple on the other. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, um, true. Which is, again, I think they mentioned the acres. Like, obviously, yep. the world is split into these sections. Yeah, these um, different sections, yeah. So, obviously, we have the... We do have, like, yeah, this kind of dark realm. We also have There's... this light realm. I think, the, I think the light realm is just the world we've been on. Yeah. Like, that's just the acre. We've, or at least it was the acre we started on. And then yep. we went, so we had like the beach acre. Yeah, the jungle. Then we went to the the town slash king's the, acre. The red, the red one, which was all red. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we had yeah, the golden beach acre. We had the red, and and now yep. the, now we see the the purple acre. Uh, and we have this also have the Jabberwocka go through returning to this world. Yeah. Um. Because we did well, see and... it was sort of dark with purple crystals kind of thing. So, yeah, it definitely yeah. invokes that. And, and if you yeah. look at the if you look at the the intro, the the matte painting from the intro yeah. of the ruby falling, there's very gold and purple motifs yeah. and stuff to relate to the gods and stuff. And and again, at the end of the day, bring assuming the show will end with warfall relics, we will have a end of the show god significance. Yes. Um, to the show, um, I'm just really curious what the significance here will be. Mm. Um, again, people say, like, this is the gods of creations, like, um, testing grounds or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, so, I, guess mm. I guess to be fair, okay, here's a, here's a point. Since Remnant is created, Remnant the planet was created by the gods. Yes. And, you know, it was an experiment. I'm sure they've done many others. This just could be a previous experiment. This could just be, be. and again, that makes sense. There is a, there is a, there is a, a, a dark portion of the world where the god of darkness like every like in, okay, in theory mm. every world in ruby i don't know the better term for it every world in ruby would have a domain of light and a domain of darkness yeah or a land of darkness or a land of light in a sense because remnant has one yeah so why wouldn't every single yeah world they make have those same features so this yeah. could just be an another abandoned world why yep. these two are connected, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll f- maybe find that out. Mm. Um, so I guess in that sense, it makes sense that in this, in this is this world's version of the domain of darkness. Yeah. That obviously Salem currently resides in in remnants. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. It, it's interesting too that we actually see near land. Yeah. Um, which is interesting in two ways. One, it mimics the volume four intro where we have that same kind of yes. aesthetic of them leaving remnant and landing else places and they also say yeah. in this in the volume nine intro we also see the landing yeah. um in the intro sequence as well um so this clearly is this clay this this neo scene is you know episode one time this is yeah. not current time because neo and ruby fell at the same time they fell at the same time yeah along with blake as well the the jabba um, walker is injured which is interesting. So that was, yeah, I don't know. Because it, it sort of sounded like it was hurt. Maybe it was after the first altercation with Yang, but then the Yang followed it. So unless it was hurt previously before going after Yang, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious what they're going to go with um, yeah. here for sure. Because the Jabba uh, like, was definitely injured, so. Yeah, and it, it's approaching Neo looking for its next prey or whatever. Yeah. And then Neo... And you can see, like, Nia gets up ready to fight. And, yeah, like, this just assembling, assembly kind of spread along the ground. Yes. And then we have other Neos kind of growing up yeah. from uh, underneath them. And, like, the Jabba Walker is, like, shocked and surprised mm-hmm. at that kind of thing. And even Nia is a little trepidatious. She's like, huh. Yeah, huh. Okay, then. Yep. And then Neo's immediate instinct is to kill. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Must fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, with episode four if we're going to pick up from there or we're going to go back to Team Ruby. I think we're definitely going to see Ruby again, just whether or not it will start with them or if it might start off with Neo. Yeah, I don't no. think we'll ever get an episode this volume of like where we won't get Team Ruby stuff. I think yeah. everyone's going to have Team Ruby stuff. It's also will. added on stuff. Yeah. Still haven't seen Jean yet, but I can imagine not seeing Jean until episode five when we might yeah. see the Rusted Knight. Going I'm thinking on till later. Definitely later. Earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'm definitely curious if, like, they're going to, like, how big of a role are Neo and John going to have? Like, we, I think we discussed that John probably will have a pretty minor role other than a few significant Don't scenes, know. but then Neo is, like, Neo going to be the de facto antagonist? I'm not sure. Because obviously, assuming they get to the tree 
episode six ish. Yeah. Again, based on the timeline, something's obviously going to ha- stop them. Of I would assume, other than the world itself. Yeah. I mean, the world itself might stop them from leaving, but but even again, why why is the tree there? Other than being like the yeah. idea that it being the world tree and that. You could technically go to any world from there, depending on what Maybe. branch you go to or whatever mm. significance it's going to have. Um, which that would also imply that this world's like the anchor of all worlds. Yeah. Because if the world tree is here, unless every world has a world tree, mm. which is possible, but I feel like Remnant would be aware of its own world tree if it had one. Yeah. Unless it's underground or something. Yeah. Um, mm. So yeah, there's a lot of... Mm, yeah. So... As with that episode three wrapped up, I, I yes. assume next episode we're going to get the forest. I'm just, I, I want to look at the intro again and see if the book panels match up to our um, mm. progression idea of how they transition through um, the world. So let me just pull it up one second. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got the beach first, then the town, then the, the, the castle, then yeah. the forest... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then it stops there. We don't get anything else off of the forest. And then yeah. also we see the grub, the, the grub, the grub man creature thing with the, yes. which, which I think that will probably tie in. Yeah. No. Okay. So. <laughs> so mm. I said like maybe we'll get illusions and we'll get like stuff after we fail to escape, but I think maybe. the the gas that the bug releases, assuming we'll see him in the mushrooms, also probably ties into that. So we could get. Disorient, we could get like disorientating illusions up this yeah. episode. Yeah. If we run into the bug man, or that could be delayed again to next ep- episode after that. <sighs> yes. Not sure. It's all a lot Don't to I. think about. It's all. It is. It is a lot. But... There's still a lot that could happen. But I'm really enjoying it so far. This uh, episode three was a lot of fun. I, just, I really yeah. loved it. It was really good. I really, really did too. Um, I'm still. I still think. I still like the idea of the crescent rose being the golden. The Ruby slipper. Yeah, ruby slippers to get out. One, yeah. Once, yeah. Once you get the crescent, like that's the port key. That's the ruby slippers. Yeah. Once you get to the crescent rose. Now the question is: Is the rose going to be at the tree? Is the crescent rose going to be at back at the beach? Are they, yeah. Like, is the idea it, it was there all along? They just didn't realize it, kind of thing. Mm. I just, I just, what is this world? Is this world <laughs> teaching them a lesson? Is it an illusion that they're seeing? Is it just a real place? That's just a weird place they have to escape? Like. I don't know. It's no, just, it's, it's interesting. Well, we'll hopefully very we'll find out more next episode, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and like, if, but like, like the Curious Cat, what, like, we're not going to fight the Curious Cat. Let's no. Like trans- well, we've seen it transform into a butterfly, so maybe, assume it transforms into a butterfly. Yes. Maybe it could have a fighting form that we actually fight, or... I don't know. We did see, um, I, I remember too, we actually, and this could tie into these illusions much like Emerald's illusion that we saw in Volume 5, we did see Salem in the, in the trailer. Yeah. Um, but it didn't. It looked more like what we saw in Volume 5 than what we saw, um, like with the Emerald casting the illusion of Salem to everyone. Yes. And we got the, again, we got the, the Ruby and Ruby scenes was like all gaseous and stuff. We saw the Caterpillar monster release that in the intro. So They were going to wake up in the shower. <sighs> <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, you mentioned earlier about the white rabbit. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think Alex is the white rabbit, but yeah. Yeah, but I've no. also seen John theorize as the white rabbit. But yeah, because he's always had like a, a bunny sort of theme with his jumper. Yeah. And there's so many cool mm. places they can go with John. I'm really curious what they're going to do with and Neo yes. as well. I want to see seen, John. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen I've seen a lot of people theorize that Neo won't make it out of the other after. Yeah, well, this maybe. might be the last season with Neo, which it's always hard with Neo because again, like. Neo's not meant to be here. No. From you know, from all our best in knowledge, our best guess, Neo is just a character that was just here because she's very popular and everyone a lot of people like her. Yes. And she's a fun character because she, you know she can do a lot of cool things and stuff. But like, what role is she gonna have? Is she gonna make it out? Is she gonna betray? Is she gonna join us? She's gonna. I don't know if I want. Like, Neo is not a good character, but she's not an evil character. She's not a no. bad person. She's just. You know, like I don't. Yeah. I don't want her to be trapped away here forever unless she chooses to stay here. Yeah. For whatever know. reason. Mm. I mean we do see oh she's like the, the mob boss mentality she has in the in the trailer. Yes. 
So maybe she does want to stay here. Maybe this is her paradise. Maybe she doesn't want. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, like, like I guess what does the re- what reason would near what like like how Weiss mentions? What is there to go back to for Weiss? You know, obviously the answer is her family. But again, as far as she knows, her family could all be dead. Yeah, like, she has no and Atlas reason and to be knows. certain that everyone survived. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, I guess Nia, as far as Nia is concerned, you know, she goes back. She has to deal with Sailor and Cinder. I don't think yeah. she wants... I, I guess the only reason I, she wants to go back is to kill Cinder. Yeah. Maybe. But I can imagine if she gives up wanting to kill Ruby, Ugh. that could also mean she kind of gives up trying to kill Cinder. Yeah. Oh, it's all very fascinating. It's you all very tiring. To when she landed and it was raining, so to me she was upset. She was showed herself as Ruby than Cinder, and I think that was just a reflection of what just happened, that she missed out on, on her opportunity to kill Ruby, and Cinder's the reason why she fell. So um, I think Nia's going to sort of, you know, grapple with that, the fact, and also she'll be looking for Ruby most likely, since, um, yeah, she wants to kill Ruby still. <laughs> Man, you're completely uh, wrong. I did not notice that, but she yeah. there's one shot where she has Cinder's legs. I did not yep. notice that. Yeah, you sort of I just see... noticed that's her feet. She yeah. was Cinder at one point. She was Cinder. If you wow. look really closely, I think before you see that shot with the feet, or was it after? I know there's a shot with the Jabber Walker looking at her, and you can see that she she looks like Cinder. Oh there. yes. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Yes, you're right. I, I had I had the Skype window. I didn't think of it in my reaction, and when I was flicking through it afterwards, I forgot right. to mention it. But yeah, it makes sense. I think the fact, even though it was raining kind of before she fell, I think it's sort of reflection yeah. that she was upset. Well, I think it was just yeah. I think it was just dark and stormy because it's always dark and stormy yeah, in that acre, but then it actually rained once she landed and stuff. So. Yeah, because she was upset that yeah. she lost that opportunity to kill Ruby, and Cinder betrayed her basically, and yeah. caused her to fall. So um, I think she's she's um, upset about that. I'm trying to think, have we seen Neo mimic someone that isn't her? Like, Ruby is roughly her size. Ruby's probably yeah. a bit bigger. Or, like, Cinder's pretty think, significantly taller no, than Neo. we have seen her mimic someone taller than her. No. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just curious if it'll be a short Cinder or if it'll be the full-length Cinder. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I'm just imagining, like, a chibi Cinder. Neo <laughs> size. Chibi Cinder. Oh. Um... That'd yeah. be interesting. Like, like, I would love the idea if they just, like, kind of, like, just p- put Neo's body, but just put all, like, Cinder's, like, hair and clothes <laughs> on Neo's frame and just seeing how that would look like. It probably yeah, wouldn't look that yeah. much different, but it, it just look, it looked significant enough to be, like, that's not I quite think, right. Because in um, a way, she's... That's she's Cinder's model, though. She's masking her appearance, so I don't mm. think, she, like, she will grow in height or anything like that, so I think she would still remain the same height. Um, but I think she's technically... Just, yeah. But mm. as far as the show goes, I think they would still just use Cinder's model just because it's that, cheaper well, yeah, that way. Probably would, yeah. But I think, yeah, in a realistic sense, she yeah. probably either couldn't transform into someone. But then again, we've seen her cast crazy illusions and stuff that, like, yeah, you know, like affects the world and changes the environment around her and stuff. So yeah, you know, it. it I, I think the idea of her, she couldn't become anything smaller than her. But I think she could definitely just mimic something bigger than her. Again, it's just. Probably the bigger something is, or the least like Neo it is, the probably more likely just a shadow on impact, and that, and like the more fragile it would be, kind of thing. The bigger something is, the fra- more fragile it would be. Yeah, I think would probably make sense. Um, for her. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I did not think we'd actually go two hours, but here we are. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, we've just about. <laughs> oh, um. So yeah, I think we're about about done here, man. I, Thank, thank you, everyone. Everyone yeah. who has been here, um, whether you're watching the live stream, whether you're watching the VOD on Twitch, whether you're watching the VOD on YouTube, which if you're watching this, it'll be the rest of it will be up on YouTube. Uh, 24 hours this after time the on, stream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget to check out uh, episode three reactions, of course, Larissa's especially, yeah. um, coming out around the same time. Uh, yeah, Earlier. 2.30 a.m. our time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, once episode four drops, I imagine episode three reactions will start dropping everywhere. So make sure yeah. to go watch that and enjoy that. And yeah, just thank you everyone. I, yeah, I, I love you know sitting here and talking with Larissa. And when you guys show yeah. up and join up too, it's, it really just makes it so much. Yeah. Um. Yeah, really helps. So thank you everyone. I've I had a blast today. I can't wait for. Uh, are we all good for next week? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're all good for next week. Yes. Um. Yes. After last week, we forgot that we weren't going to be here the next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I know. Well, um, my mum booked the uh, Melbourne trip, like, ages ago, so I just I just forgot. Sure. Um, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, that, of course, that was going to be that weekend. It, it just snuck up on me. 
<laughs> okay, I did use the right command, but it's deciding it doesn't want to post it. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> Bad Twitch. Bad Twitch. Bad Michael. Well, actually, Bad I think Twitch it's the chatbot um, itself, oh. so there you go. Boo-hoo. <laughs> oh, and there, of course, now I post um, the no. Twitter. No. No. Um, oh. I think I've got that working for. There you go. There's all the links. Yeah. <laughs> and those watching on YouTube, I'll pop the links, of course, in the description um, for you guys to check out there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was great. I think we're all good. Um, we'll wrap up there. And yeah, we should be all fine for next week. And we'll be discussing episode... Four. We're just motoring along in these episodes now. Where's the great one? Good. Job. I think she's buried <laughs> under everything in my drawer here. There she is. Oh, what, what disrespect you show to the great one? I know. There she is. Oh, here's a mess. There we go. Oop. I need I need to fix the little emblem on a belt. It's come apart. <laughs> yeah. But also he's the great one and why? <laughs> Yeah. Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you, Chozo and Drew and everyone else. It's been fun. Yeah, it's seriously. been great. E. Yeah. It's always good Thank having people on the stream. Yeah, until next week. Yes. Thank you all for watching and um, make sure you check out the Boopcast as well. I believe that's going to be streaming later today. Um, uh, yes. Yep. I believe three, three, so like three o'clock, so I think four hours from now. Uh, yeah, uh, because roughly. they're doing it every um, every second week. So, of course, they didn't do it last week, so they should be doing it, yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw a Twitter post about that earlier, so I think they're doing that today. Yes. So, yeah, make sure to check those out. And yep. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see you all next week. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging out, and we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye.